the left was the side for living and the right was the side for, for gas. I knew that our mother, because she didn't come to the left, she went to the right. But I, well, after the war, I had a sort of hope that maybe she was in some displaced persons camp, you know, that she wasn't dead, that somehow by a miracle she escaped. My number is A10 572. That is what I was. I didn't call me, I was not my name. We were not humans. We were only a number. And we were taken also only for a number. Today is the day we remember what happened to the millions of Jews and the others who perished at the hands of the Nazis. And more than a million of them lost their lives right here at Auschwitz. That fact is not lost on the people here in the city of Auschwitz, just a mile away. Before the war, many synagogues in the area served a thriving majority Jewish community. Ahead on Morning Joe, you'll hear my exclusive conversation with the second gentleman, Douglas Imhoff, that took place in the only synagogue still standing. Here is the story of that remarkable sanctuary. My name is Tomek Kuncevic. I'm the director of the Auschwitz Jewish Center Foundation in Auschwitz, Poland. This area before the war was part of Poland. This was a typical small town, Auschwitz. Almost 60% of the town was Jewish before the war. It was a very diverse, vibrant Jewish community. There were several synagogues, including this one, but this is the only one that was not completely destroyed by the Germans. My name is Maciek Zabierowski. I'm the head of education here at the Jewish Museum in Oświęcim. We are in the only synagogue left in this town and in the vicinity of Auschwitz. This is the main prayer room where men would pray. This is the cabinet where you keep the scrolls of Torah. And in here, originally, this was the women's section of the synagogue since it was, uh, it was historically orthodox. Right now, we turned it into an exhibition space where we present important artifacts. Everything changed when the war started. So uh, September 3rd, 1939, the Germans entered and invaded Auschwitz. And actually, one of the first acts or decisions uh, they made was the burning of the synagogue, of the great synagogue of Auschwitz. And of course, the whole array of anti-Jewish laws were gradually introduced. At the beginning of 1941, almost all of the Jewish community was expelled from the town to the neighboring ghettos, and about half of the non-Jewish population was also expelled. So this town really became... Um, you know, of course, a, pl a town with no Jewish people. From the free ghettos, people were deported to the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp, where a small number of them would be admitted into the camps as prisoners, but the majority had been murdered upon arrival at the suburb of their hometown. Non-Jewish inhabitants of Auschwitz uh, knew what was happening. A lot of their relatives were also victims of the camp. There was a high level of terrorization by the Nazis. There was just raging terror in, in town. Uh, people were afraid constantly, but of course they knew because they could see the smoke in the, in the outskirts of the town. They, they heard stories. They saw prisoners marching through the town. I don't think the people here in town could stop Auschwitz. I mean, there were others who could have stopped it, the Allies probably and so on, but, but not the people here. This synagogue was turned into a munitions warehouse uh, by the Nazis. After the war, even though the interior was destroyed, the building itself survived. After the war, about 200 Jewish people came back to the town out of 8,000 before the war, and they tried to reestablish a Jewish community. Unfortunately, that attempt to revive, reestablish the Jewish community never worked. Uh, by 1950s, almost everybody uh, was gone. Post-war communist Poland, small town, was not a friendly uh, place for the Jews. In 1997, this was the first synagogue in Poland that was given back to a Jewish community after the fall of communism. And then it was renovated by the Auschwitz Jewish Center Foundation, and in 2000 it was reopened. And today it uh, serves as, as the synagogue in the vicinity of Auschwitz, where people come to pray, to reflect, but also as a place of education 
for thousands of students from Poland, Germany, and, uh, and many, many other countries. Most of the people who live here today have no roots in this town. They are Polish, non-Jewish, mostly. Uh, of course, now we also have quite a, a significant Ukrainian community. These are mostly refugees who came also to this town after the, the, big, uh, the, the beginning of the war in March uh, of last year. The Auschwitz Jewish Center Foundation, on one hand, commemorates the Jewish community of this town, the town of Auschwitzin, so the town next to Auschwitz. It creates this context for people who visit Auschwitz where they can learn about a Jewish community that was t totally destroyed, but also anti-hatred education, which we have been running for years, and we are actually pioneers of this sort of education in Poland. And we run these kind of programs for teachers, for law enforcement, for uh, military cadets from the United States. Of course, when the wars in Ukraine started, this was something that we uh, had to react to. And right away, we started to help Ukrainian refugees who came to this town. There were about 2,000 people who came right at the beginning, and there are still this number is changes. But we, every day, we have classes for refugees from Ukraine. Anti-Semitism has been part of European story for, of course, for centuries. And this is exactly why Hitler used it, exploited this prejudice. And then, of course, we had Auschwitz. Auschwitz is so important, I think, to, to visit, to learn about, but also to, to, to understand the mechanisms of, of hatred, of anti-Semitism, how these mechanisms can lead to something like Auschwitz. And of course, I think Auschwitz can be very helpful in this process because it shows us that this is, these are not just words, right? But this is re a reality, that these words, these hateful words can lead to something like Auschwitz. Everybody is a minority of some kind, and, and so it's about us. It's not just about Jews, uh, blacks, or LGBT community. It's about us, because if we let one group to become victim, sooner or later we will also become victims. And I think this is also what, what uh, the Holocaust showed us.